Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Okay now, um... Private William Mandela is a hero in spite of himself. A reluctant conscript drafted into an elite military unit and propelled through space and time to fight in a distant thousand-year conflict. He never wanted to go to war, but the leaders on Earth have drawn a line in the interstellar sand. Despite the fact that their fierce enemy is unknowable, unconquerable, and very far away. So Mandela will perform his duties without rancor, and even rise up through the military ranks. If he survives, spoilers he does. Because of the time dilation caused by space travel, the loyal soldier is aging months while his home planet is aging centuries, and the difference will prove the saying, you can never go home, or I mean, you never can go home. <clears throat> okay now, um, any long time watchers will remember another book that I talked about a while ago called uh, to the Stars by L. Ron Hubbard. And, um, now, anyway, um, and they both kind of revolve around the whole time dilation and so forth. Differences like, uh, his, this, To the Stars, it was a merchant ship, whereas this one, it's taking place during war. And, um, well, and, um, anyway, um, in my personal opinion, I think I find To the Stars to be the better of the two. Why? Well, um, let's just get started. Like, um, first off is the uh, initial time shock that we see. You know, um, first, um, you know, with uh, Mandela, we see um, he goes out and um, he, he just starts out and he's in, in basic training. Then he goes out, you know, gets all of his new gear, and which some of it is, which it's, which is pretty cool, you know, like the accelerator shells and the, you know, the, in uh, the, um, you know, the uh, exosuits that they use, <clears throat> and um, I kind of find his head scratching is the way they travel is by like, I don't know, something about these uh, Stargate planets that, um, and they use some sort of thing to hurl the spaceships inside into like collapse ours and that somehow has, you know, hurls them close to the speed of light and that's how they, you know, get around. But, um, you know, I kind of like, like you said, what first thing that I already liken to the stars more than this is they just outright say oh no nope, their their ships are just that fast that powerful they could just go that way but this one it's just you know just weird but um anyway um but uh, like I said he goes out does some does a mission comes back and um oh yeah and one thing that I that I kind that always bugged me is um like why they declare war on the Torians. Like, they explain it in the end, but, um, like I said, I, you know, from what we can tell, they literally know nothing about the Torians. Like, literally nothing. Like, they, okay, they know that the Torians exist, but aside from that, they know nothing about them. Like, for all they know, they could be as far as I could tell, at the beginning, they they knew literally nothing about them, and um, yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know, for all they know, they could be, they could have been declaring war against a super advanced race that is like faster than light travel or something, you know. Yeah, but um, yeah, and um, but anyway back to the main story and um it's um you know he goes out does missions comes back and people tell him like oh the world is all different now and stuff and um 
you know, he goes, lives on Earth for a while and is kind of taken up, taken aback by how many, how much has changed while he was gone. But one thing that just bugs me about this is, you know, um, we don't know anything about what life was like before he was conscripted or, I mean, drafted, you know, so, like, uh, what was his, like, family's reaction when they got the draft notice and what's with um, like did he have any friends a girlfriend or anything from before the war and in fact now that I think about it like we don't really know anything about Mandela like at all aside from you know like learn like some stuff about his backstory like once again at the end which I think is way too little too late but um like i said but um since we don't know what his life was like before the war how shocked can we really be you know don't really i mean like into the stars when the main character alan corday is um you know he's kidnapped you know but beforehand we see him you know, uh, he, making plans, he's gonna like go to Mars, make money, and get married, and have kids, and so forth. You know, we kind of get a gist of how life is like. And then when we come back, then when he comes back, you know, when he's like later on, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, and we he from his perspective how different everything is, then, you know, we kind of really get it, you know, and then we when we go further on, we see life is um, like really leaving him behind, and he's like we, at the beginning he's like this, you know, great engineer, top of his class, and so forth, and he's you know like a genius. But then as we go along, the universe is leaving him behind, and the the um, and when he was like a G considered a genius in his time, he's now considered more and more obsolete and, you know, and with this, you don't, and with the, the Forever War, you don't really get that. Like, um, in fact, I'd, I'd almost consider the uh, Mandela to be almost like, not, like, it's not even really about him. It's more about the world that he lives in. You know, because, like, after he goes and to leaves the Earth for the first time, he never goes back. And any changes in the world, it's from somebody else telling him what's going on on the planet Earth. You know? You know, it's always somebody else saying, like, oh, by the way, while you were gone, this happened, and this happened, and this happened. And we don't even get so much as, like, an opinion about you know, like, what he, or anything about what he thinks about any of this stuff. It's like, okay, so this happened and this happened? Okay. You know, I think the one time we see him talk about or give his own opinion on anything is like, you know, when he was talking to his uh, subordinates, not necessarily at the end, but close to the end, about, um, you know, it's like, hey, how do you feel about serving under uh, somebody who's a uh, heterosexual? And like, they're like, oh yeah, I'm okay with it. I don't mind. You know, and because um, yeah, like the whole world is gone, um, gone homosexual. Because I don't know, there's something about overpopulation or something. But um, anyway, um. Um, but, um, yeah, like I said, but, um, I don't really get much of a feel about how, you know, you know, it was just, um, time travel is, like, like I said, it's not really about him, it's about the world around him, and to the effect, and, 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 um, but, uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, but anyway, um, to the defense, uh, the world is, pr that he lives in is a pretty interesting world, 
and um, the technology is kind of cool and um, you know um, but um, like I said I you know the main protagonist is not really even remotely interesting like at all doesn't even have like we know little to nothing about him really and um, like I said even when he gives up some backstory about himself you know near at the end and um, like don't really it's kind of, like I said it's just too little too late and, um, oh, and while we're on the subject of the end I'm just wondering like um, it kind of once again feels kind of a weak ending like um, you know there's the um, you know he just finds out that his love interest is um, Mary Gay I, and um, she's like heading to this colony called the Middle Finger Colony and he goes and they live with each other happily ever after and blah 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 and um, and um, you know while I'm on the subject like what, what kind of name for a space colony is Middle Finger you know, it's the other thing that just bugs me. And, um, furthermore, there's the, like I said, the reason why they declare, why they're at war with Turians. Like, maybe if they had something like, um, like, if they had discovered, like, when the governments were sort of changing hands on Earth, they found out why, and they told him, and he was like, oh, it's because there's this conspiracy, and, like, they want to dump money into the military and you know boost the economy and stuff and um, then it would have been like oh well we're, so we're kind of stuck in this war I guess till we find a way to you know figure out how to talk to them and um, but no it's just like oh all piled in at the end and um, like I, I found there was like two. There, this is actually the first in a, a trilogy. The other one is uh, I think is uh, Forever Peace and um, I forgot what the third one was. Um, uh, but um, anyway, um, but like I said, even though there's, um, I still feel that to the stars was better. I still thought there was um, and. There was a lot of stuff that in here that just kind of bugged me, but I still felt that this was a very good, solid novel, and it gives me and I give it a my own personal rating of three out of five. You know, like I said, it's I think it's an okay book, and um, three out of five is still like it's kind of the lowest grading I get I have where I can feel comfortable recommending it to others but um, like I said there's just so many things that just bug the crap out of me personally about this and um, <clears throat> yeah like like I said but um, anyway um, till next time see you later and have a nice day